color. I am painting a big Clarendon mural in this kitchen. And I want you to join me or ask questions or just enjoy it. We've also um, had a lot of questions come in from Instagram yesterday too. Yes, yes, that too. Um, just checking, yep. Just going on, I'm going on the platforms, making sure that it's live okay. Awesome. So YouTube, it's all good. And we're having people join in, which is exciting. And what's like, your vision for this mural at the moment? Pink, green and brown is okay. the color palette. Um, just taking a lot of inspiration from Clarendons because they are my favorite Australian flower. So I really wanted to do a big mural on this wall. It's a bit of a dead space. So I really just wanted to make it have a bit of Australian native goodness and a pop of colour. Ooh, I love that colour. Yeah, so I'm just like laying down the colour to start with because it's going to need detail and texture added to it as I go. Um, so I'll share updates after this live as well of how it's going because I think it's going to take me a few hours. But this is the start of just like Laying down some colours, seeing how it feels. Have you painted a mural before? No. <laughs> this is the first time. This is the first time. And I'm painting just like a massive version of like stuff I paint on my pottery. So I did a big sketch and then there's a grid behind here so that I could like space the design out across the wall and also make sure that things are like similar sizing. But there's balance of leaves and barren gums. I love that I like didn't wash the brush so that I had some of this dark mm -hmm. pink in the strokes. I'm kind of covering it up in a way to just get that first layer on but Well it adds dimension when you do that, doesn't it? Yeah, it just kind of gives it a shadow um, texture variation. And we have some questions submitted in from Instagram as well. But if you're watching, feel free to comment anything and we can ask, I can ask Shelby those questions. Um, but for the first question from Instagram, let me have a little look. Okay, this is a good one. Um, what other arts and crafts do you love and spend your time doing? I wish I had more time to do other arts and crafts, but I don't really have that much time. There are arts and crafts I would love to do, so I'm a bit out of frame. There are some arts and crafts that I would love to do, like I would love to do lead light, glass work. I, what is that? It's where, I, I'm going to explain this wrong, and there's probably going to be people that do it, and you're going to be like, that's not it. But you cut glass and then join it together with like copper or metal, a metal of some description. But you can make really cool stained glass images. <laughs> That's probably the worst way to explain it, but I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to do, I don't know. I, I just really like pottery, I think, but I like all kind of crafts. And if there's a way to incorporate another medium, I like to do it. What did you start, like what was your first medium that you first did, like when you were doing art? I started sewing actually, and I hated it, only because I just felt like it was, took so long to get anywhere and I wasn't very good at it. And I think that that's why I didn't like it, it's not that I didn't like the sewing part, it's just that I wasn't very good at it and didn't quite get it. Am I too high? No, you're perfect. <laughs> cool. I was like, kind right, of It goes all the way to the ceiling, <laughs> so. Oh, that's good. David, someone said, are you, is it just going to be botanicals or is there going to be any like mushrooms or any like other of your art that you usually do often? Um, I think just the flowering gums on this one, but 
there's potential to do that somewhere else in another wall. Ooh. No, I love this color palette. Yeah, I definitely like it was really hard because I sketched this design out and I had one where there was like lots of different flowers and then lots of different shapes and I was going, this is going to take forever to actually complete. So I stripped it right back to just flowering gums for that reason. I love to go bananas doing absolutely everything, but I also didn't want to spend, it was also about the time and how long this was going to take to do. So I stripped it back to just the gum leaves and the blooming gums. It looks like the framing makes it look so sweet and cute because like you've got the curtains on the you can see the curtains on the green and it just <laughs> looks so and like a little kitchen it looks so good i'm hoping i really wanted to keep the lace in here but it's all ripped at the bottom so i'm replacing them with like another fabric but i hope it will like complement everything in here Will you Excellent. be sewing it? <laughs> yes, I will be sewing it. Not very well. Tracy but. said, oh, nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's really nice. I'm not like used to going live because I have not been live. I've worked for like two years. It's just been like a process with the new studio because for ages I couldn't really go live in my old studio because it was pretty much outdoors. And so you get all the like outdoor noises that would like infiltrate everything. And then my studio, I always have people around now, which is really nice. So I don't really go live. So this is a bit of fun. Well, we've got Paulina all the way from New York City. There's people all over the world joining on, which is exciting. That's amazing. I always get so blown away by the people that support what I do. Like, uh, I never imagined this. I never imagined how many people from all around the world and just like how it has brought this beautiful community together. It's, it's unreal, like I can't even believe it. I'll jump to another question from um, Instagram that was posted uh, yesterday, I believe. So people submitted them yesterday. Yes, and I think you can still submit on Facebook as well. It's on the story. Oh, yes. Have to, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, yes. Uh, Terry from Idaho. Jess from Canada. Wow. That, that's like everywhere. Well, because of the timing, we weren't sure if anyone um, in the US would be awake. Oh, right. Yeah. The US has so many different time zones as well. Yes. Because when I do my restocks online, I try and like do it in between everyone, but it's so vast, the time zones. Okay. I'm not loving the edge of that, but it's just to lay down the cold just stop mm. it. Oh, no, I need to fix it. That's really annoying. So first time painting a mural? Yes. Is that yes. kind of going outside of your art um, comfort zone? Uh, in ways, because it's a lot bigger. So I had to think about how it would, oh my gosh. This, um, I had to think about how it would like present on a bigger scale and like how the dimensions will read from far away and also close up and how to space everything out. So that was a little bit like different, but I guess if you've got the vision and you've got the creativity and you want to give it a go, <laughs> that is how I live my life. So I was like, okay, mural, I can do that. So first mural, but we're just, we're really winging it. But I think no matter what you do, it will look good. One thing I've learned from Shelby is the trust, trust the process. Yes. Got, she knows, she gets the vision and she's like, I know what I want. I can see it. I can see the vision. And Just you're always it. right. You're right too. Oh, 
Don't say that. I'm not always right. Not always, but like... <laughs> so far in my experience. So far in my Oh my experience. gosh, we're about to run from the Netherlands and it's 5 a.m. Wow. Good morning. <laughs> That's okay. amazing. Is the sun out or is it still dark? Oh, good question. Um, so speaking about like being outside your comfort zone, what like style of art would be pushing you outside your comfort zone? Or is there not really, is that, does that, uh, yeah, I, I don't really like drawing people. Um, I like native, like flowers and animals and critters and just stuff that happens in the bush or the forest. People are just like, I don't know, not my, not my thing. It's like nature. Yeah. So what's like your favorite type of botanical to paint? this one <laughs> that's yeah. why i'm doing it because for the first mural i wanted something that was really in my comfort zone so that i knew it was going to look good no uh, matter what i did still dark in the netherlands no sunshine yet oh it's good that's it. not good to know but interesting to know it's good to know will i need that information at some point in my life i'm not sure yeah <laughs> not sure. well it's interesting because with daylight savings that's happening um at the moment and like in victoria the light is it goes until really late. Yeah. I've always wanted to go... Isn't the Netherlands where they have that day where it, like it's only dark for like an hour? Oh! I, don't, I thought that was Antarctica. Oh, maybe it is. Netherlands have the Northern Lights, don't they? Oh, I did not do well in geography. <laughs> Neither. Yeah. I um, It's been so long since I've been at school, so... want to do next Ooh. do I do that big circle flower and gum although they're all pink bits now like if either way I go all pink bits should I go left or right actually okay should, should, should we one? ask everyone which side yeah. of the mural do you want Shelby to paint next this one I'm going to try it because you probably can't see the grey leg but it's got like a big flower and gum there with two that come down and then some gum leaves and a couple more of these pink flowers. And then this one's got pink flowers here, another one there, and some leaves. So left or right? Mm. Let me see. I will give I'll give everyone a second to comment. Yeah, I've got to pick out the pink anyway. But so. I, my my choice i think you should do the right but let's see if anyone has any opinions about which side to do yeah i guess if i do the right you'll be able to, i can like do it this other oh, no, if i don't do this then i can do this <laughs> either way true actually the left might be easier because there's this light yeah right left side says oh i'm so bad with pronouncing names i'm sorry but I'm going to leave that pink because I can't open the jar. <laughs> Do you want me to try? <laughs> it's like a pink. Big I want to like hold it against me to open it, but I was a joke because I won't want to open it all over. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. You can do the tapping thing. I reckon it's because it's got paint. Oh, it's dry. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave that. Left side, left, left. So this side? Yeah. Okay. The light will be in the way on the right. That's like that. That good point. Yeah, yeah, that's also what I may have thought. Are you gonna claim that? Well, I did say that. Remember? Oh, you did. I don't know. I thought I said it. I might have just thought it. I do love that, um, how Australian it is and how we've got a lot of people watching from overseas. Because this yes. is such a normal plant for us. Yeah. I've always wanted one of these trees, but I've never had the room for one. Oh. Because they, they grow very big. But that 
season when they're all in flower. Yeah. Amazing. Actually, I might move the ladder back a bit because you yeah, can't you, see. Um, did you want me to clear that bench? Did you need to stand on the bench or are you okay? I don't think I'll be able to reach that one from the bench still. Logistic chat. How many colors do you have there that you're adding to the mural? Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> how what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six on there. No, I haven't used one of the greens yet. There's six to use just to lay down the color to start with. And then I'll go in and like highlight some little bits of yellow because these flowers have like little kind of nectar, nectar balls. <laughs> I don't know what to call them, but like these little nectar bits. Yeah. That I will add later. And then I kind of want to add a bit more like dimension in the colors. So like add some like highlights and lowlights oh, yeah. on these. But I will just, yeah, lay down this color first and go from there. Jess says she loves murals and wants to paint all the rooms in her house. Oh, stars on the ceiling. <gasps> that would be nice. I love seeing the people that do like their clouds on the ceiling too. That's really nice. Oh. They do like a sky blue and then add like with a sponge like the clouds. Mm. That would be so magical. Is there such thing as glow in the dark paint? I think there is. Because I know there's like glow in the dark things. Like, but can you paint and it be glow in the dark? so cool like when i we, like when i was little i had those little stars that you could stick with like blue tack yeah. on the walls <laughs> that would glow in the dark they were all really cool i have not seen them since i was a kid no. actually can you still buy those i don't know but it feels like a like a 90s like early 2000s i feel like all that stuff's coming back you're right because I've seen like all the butterfly clips that I used to wear in my hair in primary school have like come back. In trend? Yeah. It used to be in my mission to see how many butterfly clips I could fit in my hair. I'd love to see Jess's house with all those murals. Oh, like Jess, what, what murals have you painted? Um, what are the styles? I feel like a lot of people did that during like lockdowns. Yeah. Yeah. They just were like, oh, I'm going to paint the walls. I love that. The creativity of some people is so impressive. Um, we have a question sent in from Instagram yesterday. And um, it's from Chelsea who started getting into pottery herself and ceramics. And she's asked... Cause she um she asked how like do you have an issue with hand your hands like kind of being dry from working with clay and how like do you have a way of trying to fix that problem like what's your hack? Oh, just moisturize. It's like you just have to be on top of it because yeah, as soon as it starts, you want to do it before it starts cracking because once it's cracked, you can't kind of come back. Right. So to have a break from it. Like the damage um, is done. Yeah, like the damage is done. But like just moisturize, find a really good moisturized brand that suits your skin type and the way your skin absorbs those products. And then make sure you put it on in the morning and the evening. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, yeah, you just get the driest hands and then it becomes painful and it's like ouch. Not a time you want to have. Yeah, that sounds painful. That's a very simple answer, sorry. It's just, yeah, just moisturize. Is it like a specific one or it's just kind of play think, around? And... Yeah, every, everyone's skin type's different. So you really need to just find the one that suits you and how your skin works. Because you know how like you get makeup for like oily skin and dry mm -hmm. skin? Same with moisturizers, they're all different. I have sensitive like skin, so I do just like a sensitive moisturizer like i don't know what's called the or something yeah just like a base like a one that's unscented and all that yeah yeah exactly i'm just moving everything so i can get up on this <laughs> bench i did foresee this oh yes was that the most do you want me to put lids on anything or i'm just gonna 
gonna wing it and throw. Okay. Just make sure you don't accidentally kick anything. I think I should be okay. Okay. Everyone, you're hearing <laughs> you're hearing my warning now, and then cut to. <laughs> I'm too scared to move too much anyway, so I think we should be okay. It is really satisfying watching though. I almost wish I had a cup of tea so I could sit and watch while. <laughs> oh yeah, we did have tea in here. I need to go get some. The sound's kind of nice, it's like Yeah. It's not a really good imitation, it sounds terrible, but it's like ASMR. Yeah, I need a little microphone up here. We're working on getting a better microphone for live streaming. Oh, um, Carrie Ann says that she uses a balm before yeah. she works with clay and also afterwards. So like, yeah. more than a moisturizer, I assume that's like thicker. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've, I've only ever had moisturizer, um, but yeah, balm's also a really good idea. Does it have anything in it that, like, does it have like eucalyptus? Yeah, does it say coconut oil coconut or something oil. like that? Surely. That could be really nice. Something thick with some seeds. <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. This just doesn't look safe. No, it, it's totally fine. <laughs> Is it? Are you sure? It's totally fine. All right, I'm gonna do, there's a big gum leaf through here. So I'm gonna do that one. Which color? I actually feel like I need a lighter green, but I'm also thinking, like, I actually don't think that's the darkest green. I'm thinking maybe going darker. Ooh. Do I go darker or lighter? It's my life, but I'm always just questioning every decision and it's not that deep. It's just, just do it. It might be that deep. It might be deep green. I was just oh. about to say that. Maybe Gosh. I'm just, I mean, I can How always. How dorky we are. I can always overlay some like lighter colors over the top to soften it again if it's too dark. I'm just gonna go for it. Is that too dark? It's good. Cause you've got to add highlights, so it's fine. Ooh, the way it juxtaposes against that pink flower is real pretty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because I think if I go too light, the fact that I did the two light pinks there, I think it'll just contrast it a bit. Very nicely. Again, I'm just laying down the colour so you can see like it's not perfect. But it's just to get the idea of where everything's going to be placed so then I can go in later and spend the time adding the, the detail. details yeah when I watch a lot of um like painting artists they do this it's like they call it like color blocking yeah blocking it in I think yeah um it's <laughs> <laughs> Melanie said famous last words I think that was about the um <laughs> standing up there oh, with yeah. everything open <laughs> I mean, it's not where I'm walking, so it should be fine. And it's really satisfying. I'm also time-lapsing this new one. Well, I was just checking to make sure it's still recording because it stops after a certain period of time. What, uh, it was, was it after how many minutes? I think it was 40? I think it was 30. Okay, well, I think you, you restarted it just before we did this and we've been going for nearly 25 minutes. I think we'll hear the beep. I'm hoping we'll hear the beep. Of it going ding ding. <laughs> Is that the noise it makes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, quite, quite similar, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go to another question that was submitted yesterday on Instagram. Okay, this is from Beck. She said, silly one, which is how you know it's gonna be a good question. Um, if you could only use one pottery tool for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? 
This one's probably a bit um, tricky to explain to people that don't know pottery tool names. But I would actually say my rubber kidney. I was going to say that. And it sounds really rubber kidney. It sounds really strange. Uh, but the rubber kidney is just an unreal tool. It's like a rubber sort of like scrapey. I'm trying to think of like a kitchen Like a spatula. Tool. Spatula, that's it. Like one of those like rubber spatulas, but it's like on its own. It doesn't have a handle. And it's just the best for like cleaning up pottery, cleaning up equipment, smoothing things out. It just gets used every day. Probably the most used tool in everything. Because I feel like every other tool, I can find a substitute in the kitchen. Whereas like that tool in particular, I can't find a substitute for that's like, does exactly what I wanted to do. I'm just looking at the shape. I have a feeling I need to get down and have a look at the shape once I've blocked it all in. I left it down here. Do you want a hand? Maybe. <laughs> I left it all the way in there. What's that? The, the blue handle. Do you need it washed? Yes, please, actually. I might actually use one of these ones in my front pouch, my little kangaroo pouch. Do you get all the pink gone? Maybe. Oh, yes. Not maybe. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Are these water-based paints? They are. It's just sample pots from Bunnings and okay. some of my tip paint from my studio build. They are sample pots are a really good way because they're so small but you can get lots of colours for the same price as like a big tin. You're saying like when you went and bought them there was a lady who didn't realise you could do that? Yeah. I felt so bad because she looked like she was replacing a skirting board that was broken in her house and she's getting a tin like a, a tin mixed up and she had this massive thank you. You're welcome. She had this massive tear it just for this little skirting board and I was like, oh no, that's annoying because now you've got this excess tint, like tint of paint that you probably won't use. How frustrating for her. Oh, but you know, you never know. Cause yeah. like then you move and then you need to fix up. It's always a similar white. Um, we have a crash question uh, from Christina. Uh, where do you get all your overalls from? Um, these ones are ones I've had since I was a teenager. This is like the one pair that are like not typical. Um, and I just got them from Retro Star in Melbourne. All right. Because they have like heaps of like vintage old clothes that are still really cute. And the rest are sort of from Princess Highway. Most of them are from Princess Highway. And I will disclose that I do get gifted a lot of stuff from Princess Highway, but they are the cute. Did you hear it? I and did it hear it. Okay. Oh, did it. That was the camera. So this one on the table is the one that's being empty. Oh, uh, it's. You can just start the recording again. Oh, we don't have to. Yeah. It doesn't need a new battery yet. Um, yeah, but Princess Highway. Uh, I think you can like. There's Princess Highway stores in Australia, but there's also stocked at Dangerfield. Just click the red button. Yeah, I'm trying oh. to find red button. Which one is? It's too tall, you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Four, three, two, one. Um, I, I've bought a few things from Princess Highway. I really like, because it's really cute, because they emb um, not embossed, embroider some really sweet designs on there. Like, really sweet as in, like, cute sweet, not, like, sweet bra. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm not washing my brush because I feel like that grey might be a cool undertone. Leave it down the track. Alright. I think I'll need the ladder again for those. But I think I might do. I'm not sure if I can reach that one from down. Should I bring the ladder over for you? No, that's okay. I think I will do it in a minute. Okay. Um, I think what I'll do is this big round one. <laughs> it's 
So I just seen you squat squat in the sink. It's quite a hilarious. <laughs> I I feel like I feel safer on the bench than I feel on the ladder. Like I feel I just get a little bit scared of ladders. I'm just figuring out my plan of attack for this one. It's hard because it's kind of circular. I kind of need to just go for it and then just fix it up. Too big. I don't know. I'm gonna stand back. Ooh, this one's just like as if this is like flipped and you're like looking from. You see in the middle. Yeah, yeah. That was a very fancy one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you call that? Well, you're looking in through the inside, like of the lamp, like the like if you're looking. Yes, exactly. Like you're looking up. Did you pre-draw the mural or did you just start painting and, and hope for the best? I, I pre-drew it. <laughs> well, not fully. But you drew it on like you did a plan, right? Yes. But on the wall, you didn't really pre-draw it. You've made, what people can't see, there's like a pencil outline of like a grid just so that you can make sure everything's to scale. Yeah. And I think, I think that's why nature is such a comfort zone for me because you can just make things different shapes and sizes without the need for it to look in proportion. I mean, within like portraiture and stuff, you do kind of like can play around with dimension and shape and stuff and it be your style. But I just feel like no matter what you do, it always looks beautiful because this might be like really oversized in comparison to these ones, but that kind of happens in nature. Some things are bigger, some things are smaller. Still looks the same as what it would look like if it was naturally occurring. Comes in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. Which like people do too. But I just find like if you do like eyes, like eyes, nose, mouth, it, it's got so much that goes into it so that it doesn't look kind of like an uncanny valley or Even just like extremities, like your hands and your feet all have to be fingers. Yeah, there's just so much that goes into it. How does that look from where you are? It looks really good. Like it looks really 3D. Does it look kind of like <laughs> even circular? Like, yeah. I'm really meaning that because it's kind of like... Do wait, I'll angle. take a photo and I'll show it to you. It's on a big angle for me, so... yeah. Oh, I flipped that. It looks really good. Like, it, if I say it looks like 3D, it, it literally does. Wow, I did the circle. I just fixed up that. It, did, it looks really good. Oh, why am I British all of a sudden? It's I do that too. really good, Charlie. My partner is always like, how can you say certain words in certain accents? And I'm like, I don't realise I'm doing it. Maybe subconsciously watching shows and... Picking up words. Oh, and sometimes it's like old vines. Yeah. And old kind of like jokes that just sometimes slip through. I don't know if I'm behind the light on the time lapse. Oh. It'll be fine. It's a time lapse. We'll just cut this flower out if it's behind well, the light. Well, it's part of the time lapse, right? Like the time is lapsing. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be long. Like it's it's, it might take 10 minutes just for this one flower or like five minutes. But in the time lapse, it's just a... Um, Carrie Ann, I hope I'm saying your, your name correctly. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Said... Um, did you take any college courses based in art or ceramics? Surprisingly, I did. 
Um, I, I didn't do like my main degree in, oh, the frame's a bit wet still. Um, I didn't do my main degree in arts, but I did it as a subject within my degree. And I actually did ceramics. So I wanted to incorporate it with my degree, which I ended up just doing <laughs> ceramics instead. But I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I feel like if you have the access and if you're privileged enough to do that, I really recommend it because I got such a good fundamental into understanding ceramics, the different types of pottery, the different types of glazing, firing, the safety, which is really, really important, which I think a lot of at-home potters get a bit excited and then don't do the thorough reading of silicosis and all of that. So I'm really grateful that I had that because... What is that? So silicosis is like a like the dust. I think it's like... I don't know how to explain it in a very brief, simple way. Yeah. But it's the name of like the dust that is a big part of, or the chemical that's a big part of clay. Mm -hmm. And silicosis is the number one cause of potter's lung, which is where the silicosis goes into your lungs. <laughs> it's very Oh, scary. like when you're yeah. creating pottery ra yeah. uh, rather than like using, so if you make a mug, it's not like, it's the making of, it's not the c using yeah, the mug afterwards. but also that as well. So um, th that's a different like safety issue. But like silicosis, for example, is like, keeping a tidy workspace and making sure that you're handling all your wares well so that you're not exposing yourself to unnecessary dust. And I think sometimes that gets missed when people do it at home. So I always recommend when people are starting out to do a safety research on what is the best way to handle clay so that you're not exposing yourself to the clay dust. The other thing about safety is food safe pottery and food safe glazes, which I sometimes see people not being aware of and selling mugs, for example, with an unfood safe glaze or unfood safe finish. Actually, that's a question that came through on Instagram with yeah. somebody asking like, if there is food safe matte, matte glazes. And like, I guess also people might not realise, and I didn't realise until the other day when you told me, what, what food safe gl glaze means. Yeah, so... Um, there are probably matte glazes, but the thing about matte glazes on dinnerware is, I can't remember what mineral it is, but I've got matte tableware at home, and I didn't know this when I got it, but, and that's why I don't buy matte glazes, this was years ago when I bought it, because like matte's been all the rage for a while, is that when you cut with your knife and fork, the zinc or the something, I can't remember what it is, but the zinc reacts and it leaves if you've ever seen cutlery and um, like dinnerware stuff where it's got the marks mm -hmm. from when you're cutting, have you ever noticed yeah, that? Yeah, 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 like the little grey lines. Yeah, yeah, the grey lines. So that's actually because of the glaze, it reacts post firing. It's safe and fine, but it's just like not an aesthetic thing that I like. So it actually reacts with your silverware or your like cutting implements. The glaze actually reacts post firing. So I just don't really like that and I don't really want to sell pottery that marks <laughs> um we've had i think the correct pronunciation but i could be wrong apologies if that's the case um but uh lina has said hi i'm one of your fans from the philippines oh hi. i love your artworks and i love how you choose vibrant colors i just love them all oh thank you that's really <laughs> nice i was oh, when i started pottery it was this big movement of beige, browns, very natural looking clay. And I love that. I loved it so much and I really just wanted to make that stuff. But I kind of got a bit bored and I didn't really see anyone making the pottery that really was vibrant, colorful, sparked heaps of joy, a whimsy. And yeah, I could just go on. But I started looking into color application and sort of going beyond what I was taught at my degree because a lot of it is centered towards this like really naturalistic earthy toned clay because clay is mud and it's in the earth and it's very nice reflection of like mother earth but I just really wanted to add color and make it a little bit more fun and whimsical and magical and play into that Nana's kitsch era of 
homewares. Mm. So that's, yeah, I, I didn't really see much of that. I'm on a tangent right now, and I can't even remember where the origin was from, but that's what inspired me to start using colours and to just like make the art that I wanted to see in the world and also differentiate myself from everyone else because I just felt like there was so much of it and there was no way to sort of make my stamp mm. in my pottery creations. Just looking at the sizes. Melanie has messaged in or commented, same thing. And uh, she said, um, so for the for the Americans that should be sleeping, but are fascinated watching you, you paint and chat. What is the subject matter of the mural? Are these native Australian plants? They sure are. <laughs> Was that Natalie? No, Melanie. Melanie, Melanie. Uh, they sure are. Uh, this is a flowering gum tree, so it's like the classic gum trees that are Australia are known for. But this particular species of gum tree is a species of gum tree, but it's got like the gum leaves. But this particular species has a beautiful flowering gum that flowers. It's a gum. That <laughs> oh it's like a eucalyptus. Is it a eucalyptus yeah. plant tree? I, that's what I was wondering. I I know the. So it's called Corumbia Bicfolia, like the scientific name. But of course you know the, like the Latin. I, I'm pretty sure that's the, I'm, I'm like on the spot now, but um, they do these beautiful pink blossoms. Usually here it's in like spring, summer, but I don't know what it's like in other states because our climates are slightly different, yeah. but it's really beautiful because you have these like olivey, bright green leaves and then you just have this like literally this color pink. It just like pops through. There's one that's called, I think it's called Snow Princess or Ice Princess or something. That's so cute. Yeah, it's like this color, but it's got like a silvery nut as well. But I'm kind of like meshing some of the species together because that's art sometimes. You just sort of make it look cool even though it might not actually be realistic. Well, it's an inspiration, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like I need another shade of pink up there, but... I might do that when I add, like, I'll just block it The in highlights and all that. Do I need to try and open that pink again? <laughs> um, I'll, I think I'll just leave it and then I'll... I'm going to do that later because I feel like you won't be able to see me painting it if I'm, like, up there in the corner. Are your arms getting tired? Surprisingly, no. But I might be tired later. And tomorrow you're like going to lift your arm and be like, ah. <laughs> why am I sore? Ah. I always get bruises and I don't know where I got them from. Do you get bruises? Don't yeah. You? But I also am a little bit clumsy, so I'll like fall over or <laughs> run into a wall. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't make me like off guard. I'm like, oh yeah, because I'm clumsy, that makes sense, so I've got a bruise. But it's always just like, where did that come from? Like, I went to the, the Taylor Swift concert and I came home and I had this massive bruise here and I was like, where did that come from? Like, what was I doing? Were you clapping your hands, but like, instead of clapping your hands, you were clapping your leg? Maybe, and maybe I was going like really bananas and getting really excited, I don't know. I mean, but it was I, Taylor Swift after <laughs> all. I came home and I was like, what? <laughs> where did that come from? Actually, do you usually listen to music when you make art or what's what do you usually listen to or you kind of just sit in your thoughts yeah i always listen to music because i have a really loud brain and even when i'm art making my brain can still be really loud <laughs> so i like to put on music oh my gosh uh, terry's made a suggestion i really like it yeah Terry said, oh, are you going to add a little frog in there somewhere? I think it needs one. Oh my gosh, I was actually thinking, not a frog, but I was thinking like maybe a little bee somewhere. <gasps> like, I love a little bee. Yeah, the bees love the flowering gum flowers, but I think, yeah, I've just got to figure out where or how. And I also am scared because my bees... Or a ladybug? A ladybug would be cute, actually, because this looks kind of more realistic. And I'm worried by adding a bee, it might be a bit cartoony. So I might have to try and get like it a might realistic bee. It might be cartoony. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Jess said that it's absolutely thunderstorming in Vancouver, but it looks lovely here. 
Oh, it, it is really lovely at the moment. We're in autumn at the moment. And it is 21 or 22 degrees today. It's, more, it's on a little bit of a chilly side today. Yeah. But it's been like, I've noticed that March at the moment and the start of April have been really nice the last couple of years. Like, almost like spring weather. But where I am, it's probably like one of the coldest areas of Australia in winter. Is it actually? Yes. <laughs> like, in Australia? Yeah, like not... Not like official, but like if you go, I think I'm Ballarat, people go, oh, it's cold there. Like it's... Does it like snow at all? Yeah. Really? Yes. So like not like other countries, but like once a year, we're like, <laughs> it snows here. So like in Australia, <laughs> it, our winters aren't cold enough where it like snows everywhere. There's like, what, is there only like one place really where it snows that people go if they want to go skiing, right? Yeah. Like there's a couple places where it's like, I think like Mount Kosciuszko and Mount Bular where it's like <laughs> snow and like you can go skiing and stuff. Other than that, it's like s cold places get like sleet and a little bit of snow. Yeah, and we get like a little bit of snow. Some years we get like twice or three times a year and it's like wow, jackpot. But yeah. I remember when I was at uni in Bathurst. We heard that it was snowing. It was like 10 p.m. and we heard that it was snowing like a 45 minute drive away. And we all piled on cars being like, oh, let's go see the snow. <laughs> we went. It was it's like such a novelty. <laughs> it wasn't even enough snow to like make a snowball or anything. It was just like a tiny coating on the floor, but it was so exciting. One year we actually had enough to make snow people. And that was really exciting. Oh, Amber said, oh my goodness. I was thinking a couple ladybugs or a hummingbird. Oh, a hummingbird would be pretty. That would be pretty because the colours. And you've got your browns, like your warm tones that you're using. Although is pink considered warm or cold? I think every colour has a warm and cold variant. Yeah, so there's like that goes as a warm pink yeah. and a cool pink. Because have you seen those like, what's your shade? Like what's your season? Oh, pink? yeah. There's always like pink. Blue and green in all of them, I think. Right. But there's just like depends on the shade. Because you can be a warm summer or a cool summer. Yeah. Interesting. These are ones that here that like are kind of like about to like pop. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, sorry, everybody here. Hi. Um, yeah, these ones are about to pop, like they're still like encased like in their bud. Like, yeah, but they're they're not fully open yet. How long did the design take you to come up with? Um, because it's my comfort zone, not that long. But like, what does that mean, not that long? <laughs> um, good question. I don't, didn't really time it, so that's why I'm like, not that long. Like an hour? Yeah, maybe an hour. It was like a really sketchily plan. Because I knew once I got here, it felt the space, it would change and evolve a little bit. Like, this section's kind of very similar, like to here, of what this original sketch is like. But when I did the sketch, there was a flower over here that was a bit cramped. So I'd like adapted and changed it to have more leaves in there so that the flower can just sort of feature in that corner there. Mm -hmm. You only just see it. And then I've done a couple of these little buds where that flower was so that it fills up, like, so that there's not too much negative space. It's like yeah. the balance of all the colors. Just like, who do I go next? It's kind of fun just walking in the colours because you can see it coming to life a lot faster. Yeah, you really can. Which is, I'm glad we did this for the live and not like the details. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, it's fun because you can kind of see it from a blank canvas coming together. Yeah, and like from a distance, like where the camera is, it's good too because you can, um, the little details, you probably wouldn't actually be able to see them making much of an impact. I don't know how murals work. Do you sign a mural? I think so, yeah. Will you sign this one? I mean, you've always got to sign your art, even if you don't think it's worth signing, because you never know. And I think it's really nice when people sign their work, even if they're not, like, a working artist or whatever. Just because, who knows, like, one day someone might, for example, move into this house and be like, who painted that mural? And then they can look you up. 
Or they might buy the house because they're like, oh my god, there's a mural in here by the Fancy. one and the only Shelby Sherrett Art. <laughs> That's At... so strange to me. <laughs> Such a foreign feeling sometimes. That's not in small world. I mean, I know someone who would do that. Who's that? Our mutual friend. Oh, do we have mutual friends? I mean, he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> he might just be your fan. No, definitely your friend. Definitely a friend. Was it hard picking colours? Uh, yes. <laughs> I just was like, I actually made it a lot simpler for myself. And I went into Bunnings <laughs> and just picked out a card. I don't know where it's gone. It's not here, but I just got one of these like paint swap cards. And I was like, all three colors, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here it is, it's over here. I did this, I was like, all of these, thanks. <laughs> so I didn't have to like pick. Oh wait, can we see? Oh, Do yeah. you care what color names and stuff they are? No, no, you're welcome. Okay, we'll start with Facebook first. Wait, is this Facebook? Yeah. We've got Pink Clay and After the Dance. Oh, I love the name of those ones. I love how it was like Pink Clay too, because I was like, yeah. Clay. <laughs> and then the greens are Grassy Knoll, Green Point, and Swampy. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I think that's the Swamp. Is that the dark yeah, yeah, yeah. I like he's called Swampy. It's so cute. It's like <laughs> yeah. And for YouTube, we've got, um, oops, upside down, sorry. Um, after the dance, pink clay pot, and we've got grassy knoll, green point, and swampy. Get out of my swamp. And then some of the colors that I'm going to use to highlight are the tint ones that are my branding colors. So I got them custom mixed at tint, which I liked because mm -hmm. you can just send them your hex codes and they'll match it. So hex is like, I don't know what you call like the color code. Yeah, color code works. Yeah. It's it's like if you it's a, it's actually a science where if you've memorized it, you could probably know what um like if someone said a number, you could probably guess the color. So it's. The colours is based on like how much of each primary colour is in it. I don't know if you knew that. But like no. the first few numbers are like how much of the red, then how much of the blue, and then how much of the what's the other primary colour? Yellow? Is that a primary colour? I'm not an artist. I'm not very good at colour theory. That's like they always say like artists have to be like all over the theory. And yeah, I'm hey. just like, well, if you like the way it looks then you like the way it looks yep. and that's art. And I, that's I, literally the definition of art. I feel like there should be, like, yes, rules and the foundations are great, but don't be afraid to just give stuff a go. And if you think it looks good, then it looks good. It's, I think sometimes people get caught up and they hold themselves back because they're worried that they need formal training or some formal expertise and they kind of get a bit of imposter syndrome about it all. So, like, uh, if you're sitting there going, I don't know color theory, neither do I. So, oh, we're friends. To be honest, the only reason I know that little bit of information is from when, um, from my video editing background, when people have to, like, um, edit the colors. Yeah, like, I think I know a lot more than I'm giving myself credit for, but I just think that you shouldn't hold yourself back from all these, like, prestigious, almost like elitist rules around art making. Sometimes it just makes it really unattainable. Okay, I'm moving over here <laughs> just to document that because I feel like, yeah, I can't really go in there without you guys not seeing Sorry. it. So I'm just going to do this section here. Um, maybe I'll do one more leaf and then we'll call it. Yeah. It's four that went five. really quick. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. I don't know about you or watching, but I'm having fun. Alright, I'll do one more leaf and then we will call it. So maybe Ooh, can we get can we choose which colour? Which green? Oh, yeah, yeah. Swampy, I bet you you're gonna pick swamp. Okay. <laughs> How us choose what colour green for this leaf that Shelby's about to paint? We've got the top one is grassy knoll, 
This is green point or swampy. I'm thinking this big leaf here. So if that helps your decision, it's very prominent and very light. Let me show you tube. So here are the three colors that we're choosing between. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna show you again, just so everyone can comment, let us know. What color do you think that big leaf should be? I know what mine is. Do, do. I love how you enjoy picking music. <laughs> Any responses? Oh, do. yeah, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to finish my song first. Oh, okay. Um, we have, this actually also was the colour I was going to vote. Actually, no. So if someone said, what did you say? Green point. That's what I was going to say. Was yeah. it? No. I was actually going to say grassy knoll. Grassy, green point, this green is, point. This is green point here, if that helps. Oh, sorry, this is in the way. So we've said, we've got, oh, that's green point. Oh. We've had two, we've had two green points and one grass, or two grassies. Grassy, middle one. This one? one? Middle one is green point. I can't, I think that one's the... No, just, oh, sorry, I was holding this in front, so I'll choose oh. between this. <laughs> green point, okay, green point's the green worst winner. And poor Facebook's just over there. No, this is Facebook. This is, poor YouTube's just like. <laughs> well, YouTube, um, the vertical live. There's no comments. So, um, they're just watching. Oh, that's nice. You can just watch. I think I'm too scared to like comment on lives because I'm like. Mm. <laughs> so I want that answer like out loud. Oh, three points definitely the winner. Yeah. Cool. All right, it's on you if it looks bad. <laughs> so you take the whole mural. <laughs> yeah, so just peel it off. If that's not what you want, I'm actually going to bring it around a bit closer. How do you feel about that? That's so that light's yeah. not in the way. Oh, actually, I'll just hold you guys here. <laughs> You've got the whole world in your hands. You've got the whole world in your hands. Do you know that song? Yeah, I think that's why I said that as a phrase. Oh, like, yes. That's not my typical language. The whole wide world in your hands. Ooh, great color choice, everybody. Yeah, good choice. I feel like there was no way to go wrong. I was just teasing everyone. So can we have a can we come up and have a little close up? Yeah, go for it. Can you hear that ASMR? I actually think it's more my hand than the brush. It's going <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> I keep forgetting that I can't. I have to do where my right hand's gonna be. Look at these cute little guys. Cute. Oh, they're so cute. They want to see the little smiley faces. Yeah, oh, smiley faces are not anything. Make it good. I'm like struggling to reach, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Just a little bit too far in the but... Sure, well, before we finish, should I check out any if there's any other questions that came through on Instagram? Yeah, maybe two more questions and then... And if you have any questions as well. Oh, yes. Jess cannot wait to see it finished. Yay. I, I don't know whether I'm going to do it like a time-lapse oh. reel and or... They're like, thank you so much for letting us hang out with you. Oh, no, thank you. I've, I've wanted to do this for a very long time and like almost do like a regular like coffee clay chat session but that's really cute i just haven't sat down and been like this is the day we're doing it so if you want more of this please please share your thoughts because i could definitely make that a thing um carrie ann said you two sound so fun to hang around like hang out with <laughs> I feel like if you're thinking we're fun, you're probably fun too. Because I think when you <laughs> see that people are fun, it means that you've got the same energy as them. Yeah. So back at ya. Back. That sounds really aggressive. No, but I agree with that like live stream sitting down and hanging out because it's it's even if you're at work, it's nice just to put on in the background sometimes, just as a little break between music. Well, that's why a lot of people tune into my YouTube because it's like a good little background. Ooh, yeah. Because I try and like chat. I just try and have a chat with everyone, um, which is really nice. I like that people put it on as like background. So it would be good to do just like actual live conversation where it's just like an actual back and forth a little bit more than just me 
Well, that's what Melanie's saying. She's saying she's love. I sorry that they're I um loving being able to interact from like the other side of the world in yeah. kind of real time as well. That's really nice. I'm glad you like that too because I like it too. It's really nice because I think sometimes like with being an online creator, like I'm an artist first and foremost, but doing a lot of video content to share my work with you, it does get a little bit lonely and isolating, and I often don't get to have these beautiful conversations with you and I work on all these artworks and I'm like, oh, I don't know if everyone's going to like them or not. So it is really nice to hear that you are enjoying hanging out with me because I am enjoying it too. Yeah, it's just being a creator online can sometimes be really isolating because I am by myself a lot of the time. Um, yeah, everyone's saying, yep, keep them coming. We want more lives. Um, Painting pottery, pottery or even just answering questions or just chill lives is like the vibe. Yeah, cool. That's definitely something that can happen. Like even when we're slip casting in the studio, like that's quite slow and meditative in a way that we can like answer questions in between whilst we're waiting for things to set or whilst we're cleaning the bits up. There's so much of the process where a lot could come in handy. Now, speaking of being in the studio, um, there is a question that's come in from Instagram. Mm -hmm. Have you ever broken a piece that you were so attached to and really excited about? Yes. <laughs> I um, had my very first and only explosion. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was when it was like early days wheel throwing because some people don't realize this, but I'm, I was a wheel thrower first and foremost. So that's the pottery wheel where you like sculpt it up as it spins. And I was making this series of like corked whiskey bottles. And I don't know whether it was like me compressing the clay wrong or like the fact that it hadn't dried enough. I have no idea still to this day because I thought I did everything right. But I put all four of them in the kiln and one just went boom, like I fully heard it and it made the kiln rattle and it knocked every single other one and oh. they all smashed. And I was devastated because I wanted to do this really cool like like whiskey bottle. I don't know how to explain it, like a decanter kind of yeah. round bottle. And yeah, it was like really devastating and sad. And I used this really cool like red rustic clay to kind of like Oh that would be cool. I still think about them all the time. RIP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I've never had an explosion other than that. Like, that was it. What, yeah. what have, have you tried it again since? Or no, just, that was essentially like just before I got all the mystery molds. So once I got the mystery molds, like my whole medium kind of pivoted to mold and slip casting work because that's what, like, I was enjoying it, but that's what people wanted to see as well. Like, it's really interesting to me because when I would share my wheel throwing videos, no one would like engage with them and i was like oh okay so then i really pivoted towards malls because like everyone was showing their interest in those just as much as like anything else so yeah that's kind of like a bit about my journey from wheel throwing to slip casting yeah that journey is like a very interesting one but can i just say i think that was the best color to pick yeah i think I everyone like did a really good choice i um, like it speaking of colors Another Instagram question. Yeah. If you could only work with one colour, what would it be? Ooh. See, it's different to a favourite colour, right? If you can only work with one colour. Yeah. So I would say my favourite colour is actually green. I like all the colours. But would I work with green all the time? No, absolutely not. I actually think, although people would say black because black's really good, I actually like the idea of blue like a really rich cobalt blue. I feel like you can do so much with that. And like Delft pottery, I feel like I could just do Delft pottery for the rest of my life. And that's like, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the sort of like blue china that you see where it's got the white porcelain and it's got all that like delicate blue, but the blue color kind of like it varies, but it's the same color and just mm -hmm. in shade. But I think if I had to pick one, that would be it. Mm -hmm. And just the last couple little comments that's yes. coming in. Kimberly has said, due to being in Alaska, I tend to miss a lot of live streams. I am so glad I got to watch yours. Hope you all have a great night. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Moki has said the mural looks amazing so far. Thank and you. And also said it's so cool watching you um, live. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. And it's like a really, process. It's really encouraging because yeah, I, I get I get scared. Like I know that I've got the platform and a lot of you follow me on social media, but. I do get scared and I'm always like unsure what you want to see, how much you want to see, how little you want to see. So that feedback's really nice and really encouraging, so thank you so much. Do you mind if I have a look what it looks like through the screen behind you? Yeah. I'm just going to quickly look because I want to see what it looks like to you first. Oh wow. <laughs> that looks so much better than in person. No, it looks really good. <laughs> it looks really good, but like, yeah, it, it looks really cool. And um, like, is there something that people should go check out or like follow a certain page or anything because I know a lot of people don't realize like you have a YouTube account so I've got both a Facebook and a YouTube stream going here so um if you didn't know there's a Facebook account if you didn't know there's also a YouTube channel yeah yeah and it's actually interesting because I think a lot of people go TikTok and Instagram are their favorites but for me I find sorry Instagram TikTok but Facebook and YouTube are my favorite platforms which is why I'm doing a live here just because the community on both those apps is so supportive and so loving and so kind and wonderful. So yeah, if you didn't know that I had either, like definitely check them both out because where I post like long form YouTubes of the process, I only post the short one, the short versions on Facebook. Uh, and that's like where you get a little bit more detail. It's a little bit more of a chin, chin and chat, I guess. And on Facebook, I post sort of more photos and you get more of the stories and stuff like that if you're on YouTube. So they kind of, I kind of differentiate the content a little bit based on each one. But yeah, definitely subscribe to the YouTube if you can. It means a lot. But if you're already here following me on Facebook, that's also wonderful. So thank um, you. And just to end it up, Teresa has said, Shelby, it has been so fun watching your channel blossom. So glad to see a cozy little live. Hugs from Ohio. And there was one more. That was my hug. That looked like I was being like. <laughs> um, Amber said, uh, same here, I love aqua, emeralds, teals. I could not go without those colours. Yeah. And Nadi said, we want to see it all. You're fantastic to watch. Thank so, you so much. Those are kind of the, the places to stay tuned in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, if you're following along, I'll have an announcement happening mm -hmm. next Wednesday. <laughs> Um, which will kind of include what this was for. So that's just a little bonus because you were here that you get to know where the announcement's happening. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining me. Hopefully we can do this again sometime soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. So that was an accent. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Um, now, the question is, with this new YouTube, uh, ta-da. I'm just going to stand here and wait. Yep. Are you